I'd like to ask you to take a leap of faith for a moment and imagine a world where affordable aquaculture feeds communities all across the globe and takes pressure off of the wild fish population without emptying waste and pollutants into the environment. I'd like you to imagine clean global shipping where there are no CO2 emissions and invasive species are not carried from one port to another. And imagine a world also where uh, ocean plastics are not likely to become more numerous than fish in the sea. This is the promise of blue tech innovation. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. Yes, we need research and education and advocacy and wise leaders and policy. We need all of these things. We need more of them. We need them to be better funded and better coordinated. But this is not enough. If you look at historic challenges to humanity and the planet, you'll see that there's another ingredient to finding a solution. How did we beat polio? How did we increase agricultural yields? And how did we address sanitation in the face of growing population density in urban centers? I would say the answer to all of those is at least in part innovation. I know that innovation can go awry. We have many examples of that too. But well-researched, designed, and implemented innovation has been the answer to many problems and has also opened up many, many opportunities. Why do I care about this? Well, from the first time I put on a snorkeling mask and peered under the water's surface, I have loved the ocean. I've also been awestruck, truly, by the power and the scope of the sea. I spent the first half of my career in the biotech industry using innovation to tackle brutal challenges to human health. And that was very rewarding, but I always came back to the ocean. And when in my 30s I visited the Baltic Sea and was not allowed to cross the high tide line because the ocean had become a victim of heavy metal contamination, I realized that what I loved was under threat. I was honestly heartbroken, overwhelmed with grief, with disbelief, and in the end, just outraged. The question was what to do about it, and honestly, it took me way too long to figure that out. Time is of the essence here, but I digress. Moving on, the important point is that the ocean is not just a victim. It is a resilient treasure trove of opportunity and value. It's not just a carbon sink or a climate modifier. It is a source of protein, it's an economic engine, and it's a storehouse of therapeutics and reagents that haven't been discovered yet. Seeing innovation as a key to healing the ocean and allowing us to use the ocean's resources sustainably is a critical thing for us to keep in mind. And the time for blue tech innovation is now. This is for at least two reasons. One, the window for impact is closing. Let me say that again. The window for impact is closing. The faster and further the ocean and the atmosphere change, the harder it will be to turn that around and the harder it will be for the planet to adapt. Secondly, the opportunity is immense and investable today. Tech is poised to transform ocean-related industry. Regulatory pressure is growing, and economics, not just regulations and ESG, are driving change and adoption. Blue tech today is like biotech was in the 1970s. And relevant innovation is everywhere. It's in labs in our backyard and across the globe. It's in adjacent industry where technologies have been developed and in many cases largely de-risked. And it's in brand new business models. Let me give you some examples. In shipping, where an estimated $1 trillion will need to be spent 
to meet the International Maritime Organization's 2050 decarbonization goals. We see incredible innovation in digitization for efficiency and alternative sources of energy. In aquaculture, we see sensors and robots and AI also driving improved economics. In renewable energy, and I'm going to talk particularly about offshore wind, which is expected to be a $1 trillion market in 2040, we see new supply chain innovation and new technologies that are facilitating installation and also will facilitate long-term operation. In coastal resilience, where climate change is expected to drive a trillion dollars in annual expenses, annual cost, by 2050, we see new bioattractive materials that can shore up coastal areas building wetlands rather than diminishing them. In plastic avoidance, we see biodegradable biomaterials, and also new business models that can support a truly circular economy. And in blue carbon, where carbon credit markets are expected to reach $50 billion, 2050, all of these numbers being somewhat round, but we see evolving tools and methodologies for measuring carbon absorption and sequestration in order to support legitimate blue carbon credit markets. So what is the problem? In my opinion, it's a matter of awareness, of mindset, and of determination. We have not committed ourselves to fixing these problems and going after the opportunities. Startups in the blue economy are dying from lack of capacity building programs, from lack of mature innovation ecosystems, mentoring and access to industry, human capital, and very importantly, financial capital. We have got to fix this, and we can. The funds are out there. We just need to put them to work. We have got to create an environment in which the best and the brightest minds choose to solve the biggest problems of our time, rather than go to, I won't say HubSpot, Facebook or Wall Street, for example. And the way we're going to accomplish this is by giving these folks confidence that they will be able to access the resources they need to be successful. These are resources to catalyze, to build, and to invest. Let me say a little bit more about what I mean uh, when I say each of these words. To catalyze, we need regional blue tech ecosystems that connect to other efforts and facilities across the country and across the globe. Ecosystems that bring scientific founders together with experienced business leaders and provide opportunities for collaboration and networking. What I mean by build is we need incubators, accelerators, and venture studios that support founders as they test product market fit, develop viable business models, and build their teams. We need programs that facilitate pilot testing and introduce startup companies to industry and to government where they can find customers and partners. And to invest, we need individuals, family offices, foundations, funds, and industry to bring their capital and their expertise. All of this is essential for companies to scale for impact and financial returns. And this trifecta of resources is taking off, but we need more of it and we need it today. So to make this burgeoning movement just a little more tangible and give you a sense of the range of opportunities I'm talking about, I'd like to share with you just a few companies that represent hundreds of others who are similarly going after positive impact on the oceans and also returns for investors. I'd like to talk about Biofin. Biofin is at the intersection of biotech and blue tech. They're using nano encapsulation technology to protect the most valuable and in many cases least stable elements of fish feed and to assure optimal absorption in the fish gut. You may ask, why is this important? Less cost, less waste, and healthier fish. Win, win, win. Oceanium is biorefining seaweed in order to develop products that can be used in nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals, 
human food, livestock, and new materials for packaging. And in the process, they're driving much more seaweed farming with all of its benefits for the environment and society. And Vinci is using uh, virtual reality to provide equitable access to jobs and training in the blue economy and beyond. Again, win, win, win. Each one of these companies and hundreds of others like them would benefit from having access to the expertise and experience in this room. And each one of these companies and hundreds of others like them need capital to grow and have impact at scale. So I hope I have intrigued you. Uh, whether you're a startup, a company builder, or an investor, if you want to learn more, please reach out. If you want to engage, dive in. The time is now. The threats are real, but the opportunities are almost infinite. And no matter where you're coming from and what you're bringing to the table, you can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you.